Now, compare these two individuals. Compare between these two. Two of them made dua from the bottom of the sea. Two of them made dua to Allah from the bottom of the sea, but the dua was not, one of them was accepted and one was not. Why? See, these two, one of them was Yunus. Yunus alayhi salatu wa salam. Id abqa ila al-ful, ila al-ful kil mash'oon. Yunus, he thought that his people would not believe in him, so he left. Id abqa, yani means al-abd that disobeyed his Lord. He went to the ocean and he got on the sea, and then he was swallowed by the well. By the well. Now, from the bottom of the sea, he made dua. And Allah يقول, فلولا أنه كان من المسبحين للبث في بطنه إلى يوم يبعثون. If he, عليه الصلاة والسلام, was disobedient, was neglected, and he did not care about Allah, he would have been in the belly of the well until the day of Yom Al Qiyamah. The only reason Allah saved him, Allah يقول, he was من المسبحين before, not after. But look at the case of Fir'aun from the bottom of the sea. Hatta ida adrakahu al-gharaq. When he was drowning in the bottom of the sea, what did he say? Qala, amantu annahu la ilahi illa alladhi amal fihi banu Israel. He said, I believe there is no God except the God of children of Israel believed in him. Tawheed from the bottom of the sea. Did Allah save him? No. Allah replied to him and he said, Al-ana, al-an, wa qad asayta min qabl, wa kunta min al-mufsirin. See, subhanallah. He said there's only one God, and that God is the God that Moses and Harun, alayhi salatu wa salam, believed in him. And Allah said, no. Why? Why did Allah save Yunus and did not save Fir'aun? Because Yunus alayhi salatu was a mu'min. And Fir'aun before that, he's the one who used to say, وَمَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى وَهَذِهِ الْأَنْهَارُ تَجْرِ مِنْ تَحْتِ وَمَا عَلِمْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَهٍ غَيْرِ وَأَنَا رَبُّكُمُ الْأَعْلَى He's the one who used to claim all this beforehand. So when the musibah came, Allah did not answer his dua. But in the case of Yunus alayhi salatu was salam, the only reason Allah saved him, إِنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ So now in our marriage, in our marital lives, we call to Allah and I say, Ya Allah, make my husband righteous. Ya Allah, make my wife righteous. But we forgot Allah before that. So if you want to do something, you got it. The other reason, ya ikhwati fillah, that this dua is not answered while you're still praying, going to the haram, going to Masjid al Nabawi, getting up in the middle of the night and the dua is still not answered, is because we feed ourselves and feed our children and our wives from haram source. From haram source. You know, if you put the seed of onion and you plant that seed and you expect that seed will come out of that earth as a beautiful olive tree, you are fooling yourself. 
when we feed our children, our wives, through haram income, and then at the same time, we want them to be righteous children, righteous wives. We're fooling ourselves. And our dua that we make for them and they make for us, especially the one that the person is consuming haram makes, it's not responding. Because the messenger of Allah, Yaqul, وَذَكَرَ رَجُلُ أَشْعَدْ أَغْبَرْ يُطِيلُ السَّفَرْ يَمُدُّ يَدَيْهِ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ يَقُولُ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ يَا رَبْ وَمَطْعَمُهُ حَرَامْ وَمَلْبَسُهُ حَرَامْ وَمَشْرَبُهُ حَرَامْ وَغُذِيَ بِالْحَرَامْ فَأَنَّا يُسْتَجَابُ لَهَا And then the Messenger of Allah mentioned a man with uncapped hair, dusty feet and outfit, traveler, raising his hand, Saying, Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. But he is wearing from haram. He ate from haram. He drank from haram. How would Allah respond to such a person? Yaqulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How would Allah respond to such a person? It's not going to happen. So if we want to fix the problem and we want to have that family, then we must understand that we have to have number one dua and avoid making dua beforehand or during the calamities, though it's recommended and definitely, definitely helpful. However, make sure you make it beforehand. Second, you avoid haram things. The other thing, the recipe, beside the dua, that would make your family or give you the success that you're asking for, peace of mind, is rifq, gentleness, kindness. The Messenger of Allah, Yaqul, إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ If Allah attends, Allah wants the Ahli Bayt in Khayra, Khayr for a family, أَدْخَلَ عَلَيْهُمُ الرِّفْقِ Allah will introduce to them gentleness. The husband would be very gentle when he's talking to his wife. He would be very kind when he's addressing his wife. He would not say, bring me food or where's my drink or what? No, he would be gentle, kind. Because the messenger of Allah, يقول, ما وضع الرفق في شيء إلا زانا الرفق is not added to anything except that it will beautify even if you're upset with your wife if you're angry with your wife if you're displeased with your husband using gentleness is the peace of mind that you're looking for يقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the hadith that I mentioned, خيركم خيركم لأهلي وأنا خيركم لأهلي How good he used to be, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His wives used to be harsh to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To a point that Umar ibn al-Khattab was talking to his wife and his wife responded back. Umar ibn al-Khattab said, when we were in the city of Mecca, we used to have control of our wives. But we moved to the city of Medina where women, they had control over their husbands and men. So our women adopted the behavior of the Ansar. So my wife responded in a harsh way, the way I spoke to her. So I said to her, you're talking back to me? She said, why not? The wives of the messenger of Allah, they talk to him. Are you better than him? He said, I rush back. I rush to the house of Hafsa, my daughter. And I say to him, do you talk harshly to, to the messenger of Allah? She said, yes. And sometimes for the whole night, we don't even talk to him. But was he ever harsh to them? Was he ever stayed? A hurtful statement? Never. Why? Because he was 
the best to his family. So if we want the recipe of success, how to build a peaceful home, then husband, please be kind to your wife. And remember the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, rifqan to anjasha, rifqan bil qawarir. He said, be gentle to qawarir to fazos, to women, be gentle to them. Because when we're gentle, they respond back to us. The third thing that you need to do is a tatawar. Tatawar is listening to one another, obeying one another. See, a lot of men in the mentality of men is one-way street. I give the order. I'm the marshal here. I'm the commander. I give the order. You listen. But the messenger of Allah says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Yassira wa la tu'assira. He say, make it easy. Make things easy. And do not make it difficult. وَبَشِّرَ وَلَا تُنَفِّرَ And give glad tidings. Give them the good news. And don't push them away. And then he said, وَتَطَاوَعَ وَلَا تَخْتَلِفَ And listen to one another and do not disagree with one another. Three powerful, very, very powerful advices. Give good news. Don't ever get, give bad news. You lost your job. Or you were giving a warning. You come back home, your wife says, and you know she's concerned about your job and the income of the family. You don't say, oh, I lost my job because you made me late. No. You don't. You just say, I came home early, honey. I came, I missed you. I came to see you. Yeah, honey, give the good news. Bashira. Give good news. Make things easy. Make your face a logan or banner of joy, not fear and horror. Joy. And then he says, Your husband says to you, sister, can you please do such and such? You don't say, why? You know, why? No. You listen, because the messenger of Allah said, المرأة صالحة, the righteous wife, من إذا نظر إليها, the one where her husband looks at her, she pleases him. وإذا أمرها, وإذا أمرها, and when he orders her to do something, أطاعت, she will listen and obey. She will listen. So, this is what the messenger of Allah is talking. Watatawa. And if your wife gives you suggestion, then you should say Alhamdulillah. You know, Alhamdulillah. Because when the messenger of Allah and the companions of the messenger of Allah were all going for Umrah, and the mushrikeen of Mecca, they refused the Sahaba and the messenger of Allah to come in. And the Sahaba were really unhappy. And the Messenger of Allah said, listen to this, the Messenger of Allah said, shave your heads, slaughter your head, the animal, sacrifice your animal. And the Sahaba would not move. They would not move. They would not obey the Messenger of Allah. Umar bin Khattab comes to the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَيَقُولُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Alasta Nabiya Allah, are you not the messenger of Allah? Fayyakul Bala. Yes. And then he what he did say, Alasna ala al haq are we not on the truth? And he said, Yes. Are they not on Batil? He pointed to the Mushrikeen. He said, Yes. Qala Farima Nuhti Dani ata fi dinina. Then why are we giving? Why are we disgracing our religion? Qala Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ana Abdullah. 
I am the servant of Allah and Allah will never disgrace me. Will never disgrace me. That's how angry the Sahaba were. And the messenger of Allah, he got up and went to the house. Who's in the house? Umm Salama. In the tent was Umm Salama. Umm Salama, she saw the face of Rasulullah red and angry and upset and sad because they disobeyed the messenger of Allah and he was afraid that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may strike them all. فَقَالَتْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Get out of the tent. Ask someone to shave your head. Slaughter your head. And they will follow you. And the messenger of Allah did not say, Women, don't talk to me. What do you know about the affairs of men? What do you know about how to lead? No, he got up took her suggestion and he asked someone to shave his head and he slaughtered his head and the Sahaba radiallahu anhu when they saw that they shaved their heads like the messenger of Allah and they slaughtered like the messenger of Allah so يقول وتطاوع ولا تختلف suggestion wallahi our wives are extremely intelligent very intelligent do not assume that just because she's with the children most of the time and she takes care of the house and you are the manager of this and that in your company that she doesn't know much no so listen to them let us listen to them and they will listen to us in return the fourth point if you want to build peaceful Household, establish Qiyam al-Layl. Establish Qiyam al-Layl with your wife. Not alone. Do not pray the night prayer by yourself. No, with your wife. In Musnadi Ahmad, the messenger of Allah Qal, Rahim Allah Imra'ah. May Allah have mercy. My wife, a sister. She gets up from in the middle of the night. She makes wudu. She prays Qiyam al layl And then she wakes her husband up. For in Abba, if he refuses, he said, Don't wake me up. I have to work tomorrow. You know, I'm working. I'm not like you, staying home, not doing much. Don't wake me up. She sprinkled some water over his face. Not drown him with water. No. Sprinkle some water on his face. And he said, Allah, And may have mercy on a husband who gets up in the middle of the night, makes wudu, prays qiyam al-layl until what Allah wills, and then wakes his wife up for qiyam al-layl. Ikhwati fillah. Qiyam al-layl is the fuel of Iman. It's what would increase your Iman. And what we're missing nowadays is not the information, is the Iman. I am certain that I have not presented one single new ayah or hadith to you. You all know this. We have information of all this material but we don't apply them. Why? Not lack of information. It's lack of Iman. The level of Iman is low. So with your wife, you need to give her the fuel of Iman and let her come to your level or allow your husband to come to your level. And when that happens, when that happens, you see, that her attitude will change. His attitude is completely changed. You will see that the household is built on taqwa. And you will love the result of what you see. Final, but not the least, yet it is the last. It is your children. Take care of them. But when 
is exactly like dua. Not after you have them and they're running around like little devils. Not when you, you know, bring them to the mall and they touch every single thing and they want to buy and purchase every single toy. No. No. Before that, before you have your child, and that's why the Messenger of Allah taught us the dua before we have any intimacy, intimate relation with our wife to make dua. Not after we have them. No, before. And not only after we after our wives give them birth. No, while the wife is pregnant with the child, she should be righteous. She should be righteous. She should not listen to anything that is happening. Because the child is listening whatever she is hearing. Nowadays, and I know you have read his research, they said it is highly recommended for the father, not the mother, for the father to come and talk to the child while the child is in the womb of his mother. So when the child is born, he can recognize the voice and the sound of his father. We say, if the wife is watching all this Indian movie, or Arab shows, or Hollywood movie, and she's watching all this commercial music, she should not assume that she's the only one who is taking this information. No, the child also is taking that information. It's taking the information and when he comes out like a little devil, it wasn't him that made him like that. And he did not make himself like a little devil. No, it is you as a parent who did not do the responsibility that was there for you to do. It is very important. Extremely important. I met a sister, subhanAllah, with two children, two daughters. Wallahi, one of them, you will think that she is a human angel if that exists. Her little hijab, she's so quiet, so calm. You know, when she sits with her mother in the masjid, she's reading Quran. She's trying to help her mother. She's trying to help her sibling. And you will say, subhanAllah, this is a dream daughter to have. On the other hand, her second daughter, she is Mrs. Iblis. I mean, nothing can be more evil than that. I have never seen a child, a little brat, like that child. Stepped inside his home, he was overwhelmed with fear. An angel came with words from God, things were still unclear. Saying, read, read, but he could not read. Amazing words that he heard A trembling deep inside his heart Confused by what had occurred There was only one who could comfort him To help him see the light To ease his fears, to reassure Was Khadija his wife He said, Zamiluni, Zamiluni Death 